welcome to Author Spotlight. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I like to highlight the works of one author. The author that I am going to be talking about today is Sigrid Nunez. Sigrid Nunez has written nine novels, a memoir, and a number of short stories that have been published in different collections. What Sigrid Nunez really became known for was her novel called The Friend, which was published in 2018 and won the National Book Award for Fiction in 2018. And all of a sudden, people discovered Sigrid Nunez, though she had been writing for a really long time. In fact, her first novel, A Feather on the Breath of God, was published in 1995. After Sigrid Nunez wrote The Friend, she wrote a novel called What Are You Going Through? And that was published in 2020. And then most recently, she has written a book called The Vulnerables, published in 2023. Those three books sort of make up a trilogy. And in listening to interviews and reading interviews with Nunez, she has identified, though she didn't when she started writing the books, that it really is the same narrator going through all three books, though at different times and different things are happening to this narrator, who remains unnamed in all three books. But I will talk more about that in a moment. So in The Friend, the unnamed narrator inherits a Harlequin Great Dane named Apollo. One of her close friends has committed suicide and left the narrator with this Great Dane to take care of. That is some of what the book is about, this relationship between humans and animals, and then by extension, how animals feel about certain things, and how humans grieve and go through loss, and maybe how animals grieve and go through loss. And Apollo really is a wonderful character in this book, and the relationship that the narrator and Apollo start to form is really, really wonderful as well and very memorable. The narrator lives in a very small apartment in New York City and all of a sudden has this huge dog to contend with. So the dog and the unnamed narrator are both bereft, forming this friendship, and while the book is exploring grief and loss, it's also exploring the writer's life. This narrator is a writer, her friend was a writer, and one of the most amazing things about The Friend, when I read it, that really struck me was the number of other writers that the narrator references and cites and talks about. It's almost as if you are reading a common book, like a book that has collected lots of different quotes from different authors. And this is highly impressive to read from the narrator, but then also when I was reading, I just kept thinking how impressive it was for Sigrid Nunes to make these connections and include all this, and yet still continue with this story between this narrator and this dog. So when I was going through The Friend, I counted there were at least 58 authors named in just 212 pages of a novel. They were novelists, poets, playwrights, philosophers. Then that really just adds to the depth and the richness of the story. The story in The Friend is more a story of reflection, less a story of action, and the narrator in reflection is mostly speaking to the friend that she has lost. This theme of looking at loss and grief and how people process that continues in the next two books that Sigrid Nunez wrote. What are you going through? The title of which is a Simone Weil quote. And it's an unnamed narrator again, who is on the way to stay with a friend at the end of this friend's life. This is not the narrator's best friend, just someone that the narrator knows. They are writers and this person is terminally ill and deciding to end their own life and has asked this unnamed narrator to be there with them, to help them go through it and be with them at the end of their life. And Sigrid Nunez, when she was writing this book, did start to realize that it was the same narrator, having different experiences, but the same sensibility and the same voice and the same way of looking at the world. What are you going through also looks and reflects the works of many other writers and is, like The Friend, really a book of reflection. And then In the Vulnerables, which just came out in 2023, this unnamed narrative voice continues. 
this is really a pandemic novel. It was written during the pandemic and the unnamed narrator moves into a friend's house. The narrator gives up her own apartment so that a doctor from the West Coast can stay there because this is New York, the epicenter at the beginning of COVID and doctors were coming into New York from other cities to help. So the narrator gives up her apartment for this doctor who needs to live in isolation and goes to stay at the apartment of a friend whose parrot named Eureka, she is pet sitting. This parrot is an amazing character in the book and is also a very spoiled parrot. This parrot has its own room with this cage and these scenes of jungles painted on the walls and is very much an important part of the book. Because the narrator is spending so much time alone, this is a time of isolation for everyone, the connection with the parrot becomes pretty important. Someone to talk to and someone to watch and think about. And parrots we know are very smart. The title comes from the fact that the writer, the narrator in this book, is old enough to be considered a vulnerable, meaning someone who would have been particularly susceptible to COVID-19 in the beginning of the pandemic and for whom it would have been very dangerous. Part of the reason that the narrator has to take care of Eureka is that Eureka's owners are stuck in California. They cannot fly back because of this pandemic and restrictions on travel and movement and safety. Eureka did have another pet sitter, this college student, who also remains unnamed for the most part. He ends up coming back to the apartment because he doesn't have anywhere else to go. And at first this is infuriating to the narrator. Now she has this college student who is very different from her invading this space she's carved out for herself. They end up forming an unusual relationship and unlikely friendship, but the connection between them is not unlike the connection that the narrator seems to have made in The Friend with a dog. This book is also really looking at grief and loss and sadness, not necessarily even loss of certain people, but loss of freedom of movement and loss of space, loss of purpose. And I listened to Nunez speak about loss and why it is such a prevalent theme in her books. And she said that she felt that all of life is about loss, not necessarily the loss of somebody, though it can be the loss of somebody, but it can be the loss of a time in your life, the end of a relationship, a small loss, you lose something physical or a much bigger loss. That is sort of what makes up people's lives. Moving on, in a sense, is losing something. I thought this was really interesting. And the fact that The Vulnerables is a pandemic novel that came out of this recent pandemic that we know is really interesting when you compare it to an earlier one of Nunez's novels called Salvation City, which was published in 2010 and is about a global pandemic, a flu pandemic, in which a large number of people die and everything is shut down. There are many flu orphans who are created. The parallels are extreme between what Nunez was portraying in this book in 2010 and what the world was actually going through when she wrote The Vulnerables in 2023. And to read it during the time of the COVID crisis was really unusually striking. But Nunez has said that even before 2010, people were talking about not if, but when there would be this large flu pandemic. The ideas were there. And she looked back at the flu of 1918 and the number of orphans that that created and people who experienced loss. So it has this main character named Cole, who is a boy who got sick. Both his parents got sick and they both died. So he is sent to a place called Salvation City where he lives with a minister, the minister's wife, Cole was raised by his parents without any religion. So there is this conflict he feels. He likes the people who are raising him, but he doesn't know what to believe. And he certainly doesn't know what to believe about where his parents are now that they've died. He doesn't know whether to take the messages that they would have sent him or to start to look at what he's learning from the people that he's living with. Salvation City is a really interesting place. It's a place that is based on this idea of salvation through religion and through a relationship with God. 
there is the idea of being raptured. There is the idea of certain people being chosen to remain alive. And Cole makes some interesting friendships and starts a family in a way with these people who have adopted him. And they are not people that he ever would have encountered in his life before. So the book goes from really being about this flu to being about this place that rose out of it, that makes up its own rules in a way and doesn't necessarily believe the greater messaging or what they're hearing from the media, but really is firmly rooted in this Christianity and this community that they have created through their religion. There is not really a relationship with an animal in that book, but in looking at the animals in The Vulnerables and The Friend, those books very much center on a relationship with an animal. People have looked at What Are You Going Through, where there is mention of various cats and sort of pulled on that thread a little bit there. But one of the most interesting books that I read of Sigrid Nunez's was written in 1998 and is called Myths, The Marmoset of Bloomsbury. And this is a biography in a way of a pet marmoset that was owned by Leonard and Virginia Woolf. So again, there's this very literary connection because Nunez is looking closely at Virginia Woolf whose words you also see in these later novels of hers. It started out actually as a children's book and then it turned into something else. And so it's sort of biographical, it's sort of an historical novel. This is a marmoset who's not doing well, who's ailing and ends up with these really kind caregivers, the wolves who truly are very close to this marmoset named Mitz. The book examines closely that idea of devotion that people do have to their pets and the relationship between humans and animals. And also, of course, is looking closely at writing and writers because these are the wolves, both of whom were writers and started a press and interacted with many other writers. It's set in England right before World War II. When it starts, Virginia Woolf has just finished a novel called Flush, which was a biography of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's pet dog, a Cocker Spaniel. So there is a connection also between the book that Nunez is writing and the book that Wolf is writing. These connections are part of what I think makes all of the books that I've read by Sacred Duna so interesting and full of depth and compelling and page turning, but also just leave you with something to think about whether or not it's exact details from the book. You just feel like you've you've absorbed so much information and you've consumed so much. I think it's an exciting exercise for your brain, especially if you really like books and writing and writers. Mitz is short. It's sort of a novella length. Parts of it are really funny. Parts of it are also a little bit sad. And there are these kind of funny connections that Virginia comes up with between the way her husband might look at her and look at this marmoset and how they can be the same and they have the same needs. That's not to say that Nunez was comparing Virginia Woolf to a marmoset. That's just more of the humor that comes out. In the book, Nunez looked at Virginia and Leonard Woolf's diaries and letters they wrote and autobiographies and memoirs by their nephew to get all the information that she included. Sigrid Nunez was asked why she writes so many books that closely explore the relationship between humans and animals and really then get into the question of what animals truly feel and how much they know and what do they think. And she just responded that everything about the relationship between humans and animals is interesting to her. Animals are a mystery to us. She says that we know they have feelings and we know that they interpret things they see and hear. And humans have ways of interpreting what they think animals are thinking, communicating through signs and behaviors, but we don't ever really know what goes on in their heads. And she believes that companionship with animals is something that greatly enhances a person's life. And I think that that is reflected in the books of hers that include this relationship with animals. When The Friend was published and when The Friend won the National Book Award, it was as if Sigrid Nunez was being discovered. But in reality, she had this extensive body of work before that. Everything that I've read by Sigrid Nunez has been as well-written and as thought-provoking and full of characters, nameless or not, 
that seem really developed and every book that I've read of hers is also gets me thinking about a lot of other things besides what I am reading in the book and it makes me want to seek out more information and learn more. So if you've read The Friend or What Are You Going Through or The Vulnerables and you want more, there is plenty more for you. If you have not read any books by Sigrid Nunez, I recommend that you do. There's plenty to choose from. I do not think you'll be disappointed. Thank you for joining me.